So welcome everybody to our second performance accelerator at Caffeine Club. Um, we have a new topic uh, this month um, led by our social lab team. Um, we were planning on live streaming this on YouTube, but again, like the email that I sent out this morning, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to unless we get to 100 subscribers last I checked. There's a lot for everyone. So shame on those of you who have not subscribed yet. So please make sure you subscribe after you're done uh, with today's session. So our friends in our overseas offices would have a chance also to see cool stuff like this live. So now I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael, um, social lab. And there's some social lab people here, too. Um, so today I'm going to walk you through kind of our social lab wall takeover. Um, focusing on sort of three main pillars of audience insights, profile um, research, um, creative content, so hardworking social content, and then lastly, um, sort of our social CRM strategy um, and sort of tactics surrounding our paid media approach. But instead of going through kind of a list of our capabilities, we thought it'd be more fun to sort of make up a brief, so a fake brief, and then sort of walk you through how we would go about um, executing on the brief from start to finish. So, over here is a lovely brief. Um, you can see that we have a client um, that has a new digital payment app called Fast Money, I believe. Um, they want to target an audience of millennials, and their goal is to sort of get people to know about this digital payment app because it's new, um, and then ultimately for people to download the app in the app store. So from here, if we were to get this brief, um, sort of the best practice would be really to understand our audience. So we'd start with social listening, for example, um, social research. So we were asked also to highlight social listening specifically. So we're just going to talk. Just going to talk through um, one of our tools, Crimson Hexagon. So for this, we would kind of just do a broad search of digital payments. We don't really want to specify exactly what we're trying to listen to because we don't want to dictate the results that we get. So. For example, we would talk to the client about who they think their competitors are, do a little research on who they think their competitors are, and then try to get an understanding of the social conversations surrounding digital payments. So if you can see our, our fake Boolean string here, um, it's interactive, so you can add terms to it if you want. Um, we wanted to look at Bitcoin, uh, Venmo, and PayPal, and kind of get rid of some of the clutter, in which case we would take out sort of promotional conversation happening or any sort of spam that's coming in, um, and then you would validate the query, kind of look at the results, and then you always want to go back to your string and refine it a bit more, so if you'd be kind of surprised the extent to which people put what they talk about on social, it's kind of crazy, so you'll get things that you aren't really expecting. So I kind of wanted to show you an example of some work that we did for Southwest, um, and some of the things that we can get from social listening, so for example, we wanted to talk, me and Maria over there, I wanted to investigate sort of rapid rewards um, for Southwest Airlines. So one of the outputs you can get from social listening, um, it's not just sentiment, you can understand sort of, you can look at spikes in conversation and sort of see what's happening in the airline industry. For example, this was for Q2. So for me, this is really helpful because instead of doing a broad Google search for you know, what happened in Q2 um, in the airline industry, you can turn to social listening and see you know, where is the highest amount of conversation coming from. This is coming from Twitter, so it's where people go for news to talk about news. And from here, we were able to see spikes related to United, for example, everything from that to um, the New York Public Theater showing of Julius Caesar to um, JetBlue partnering with Sophie and allowing people to or doing self-boarding facial recognition announcements. So really a wide variety of things that I'm not sure you'd really be able to find just by doing a general Google search would take definitely a lot longer. So this is one example of an output you can get from social listening. Um, another one which is really cool um, that we did together um, was looking at the conversation happening uh, during the customer journey from like, pre-trip to post-trip. So this is kind of cool from an engagement planning perspective. You can see, for example, the volume of conversation happening during the planning and booking stage, the in-transit stage, post-trip and advocacy, and you can also see sort of the sentiment of conversation along each of those steps. So you can see, you know, where this would apply for whatever uh, client you're trying to work with. But for Southwest, it was really cool kind of to see what people are talking about at each stage of the, of the journey. So yeah, I just wanted to also make clear that for social listening, it's mainly going to come from Twitter, just because you have to use public um, information. I mean, 
it seems a little creepy, but they can't see your tweets if they're private. So it's really just what's publicly out there, which is why a lot of it comes from Twitter. Um, but Crimson Hexagon, this tool just came out with an Instagram capability, so now we can track Instagram. And then Facebook has a new beta audience insights where we can look into what people are talking about on Facebook, which I haven't used yet. But they're coming out with more ways for you to see what's happening, not just on Twitter. So yeah, so for this brief here, like I said, we looked into digital payments. Um, we then kind of pulled, I'm just gonna talk about sort of three main insights that we got from that conversation. So things that we thought were relevant that we'll eventually talk about when we apply it to our funnel over there. So the first insight that we got was an age distribution. So from Bitcoin, PayPal to Venmo, we can kind of see the emojis, um, which one stands for a different age range. Um, and you saw that Venmo had the highest amount of millennial users talking about them. So since that's our audience from the brief, we wanted to kind of hone in on the conversation that Venmo was having, see what they're talking about, and see how we can position ourselves against them since they're such a big competitor in the market. Um, so that's one insight that we thought was useful to inform our uh, campaign. The second insight that we found was affinities. So this is a fun one, especially since our audience is millennials. We kind of could see essentially um, how likely our audience is to like a certain topic or a certain product compared to the rest of, of Twitter. So that's what the affinity capability is. Mm -hmm. So for this, we saw that our Venmo audience um, is 50 times more likely to be interested in celebrities than the rest of Twitter. Um, I just showed Viking Kardashian. And we also saw that they are 10 times more likely to be interested or using Instagram versus the rest of Twitter. And then lastly, the third big one that we thought was an actual insight was that they are three times more likely to be talking about or interested in you know, Starbucks than the rest of Twitter. So you can get a variety of affinities ranging from 50 times more interested to three times, but sort of just picking the ones you think you can actually um, execute on uh, that will inform your campaign. So these are some three main ones that we got. The last insight that we pulled uh, is really just looking at the conversation. So social listening can be, you can just type in you know, a term and get hundreds of thousands of tweets and see sort of volume and sentiment and everything, but it really can be like a manual process. You should go back and find your string. You should try to get it as accurate to what you're trying to listen to as possible because it does affect your volume. It does affect your uh, sentiment to get a better, a better um, idea of what people are talking about. So. For example, for conversation, what I would do is I would sort of filter between negative and positive and then manually go through the tweets and see if I'm pulling out any themes. And then from there, I would filter even more, for example, privacy. I would filter within the monitor of privacy and um, see what people are talking about. So you don't have to manually go through every tweet, but you should really spend some time um, with the tweets and see what people are talking about. So for this particular campaign, we saw that our Venmo audience was talking about privacy as a major topic of concern. Uh, negative sentiment is shown by the negative emoji. Um, and then these are just some examples of screenshots um, that we pulled from um, the conversation. So you can see sort of um, privacy coming up. You can see how the string directly affects the type of tweets you're getting. So you're really, you're only going to get what you put in the string. That's why I recommend just going really broad because you really shouldn't go in with an idea of what people are talking about. You sort of let the, let the conversation lead you in different directions for what kind of things you're going to find. So for this, it was pretty straightforward. I thought they were going to talk about privacy, and that's what happened. But for other things, you really can be surprised with what people are talking about, especially if you're unfamiliar with the product. So from here, we wanted to show how each of these insights could actually be executed on. So this is uh, our social lab funnel. It really guides like, every campaign that we do. It's called um, our social CRM strategy. So that's consumer relationship management. Um, as you can see, there's different phases of the funnel from awareness, consideration, and conversion. Um, so I'm just going to walk through kind of like each format that we would use for each phase of the funnel and then how the insights um, informed each decision that we made. So these aren't just decisions um, we're making out of nowhere. We're actually always tying it back to the social listening to uh, dictate what we do with it. So for example, for touch one, for awareness, the type of format that we would choose would normally be um, the video, just a hero piece of content, as we call it, just to get people you know, interested or more aware of what we're trying to um, sell them. So for touch one, we decided to do kind of a video using micro-influencers, so um, based on the insight that they're really interested in celebrities. 
So micro-influencers sometimes are better than just spending a lot of money on a huge celebrity because it can seem like more authentic, um, it doesn't cost as much, um, and it can you know really resonate with your audience. So this is a little interactive, so we're gonna try it out. Um, shout out to Luca, who's um, back in Germany, but he was the MacGyver that got this on the wall, so that was really awesome. Um, so here we go. So here is your touch one, and you put it in for a millennial audience, um, mobile first, and eventually you hit them with the video, like I said. Um, if they watch the video, great, you send them to touch two. If they don't watch the video, for example, if they watch 30 seconds of it, we can retarget them with another video starting 30 seconds in. So it's really cool kind of the retargeting capabilities we have and um, play around with just to get you to move down the funnel. Um, so let's say that they watch the video, awesome. So we send them to the second part of the funnel, which is the consideration phase. Um, touch two is a carousel, so that's kind of the format that we would recommend based on the insight, as you can see, that um, people think that most creepy, so they don't really think they have much privacy. So carousel is a cool format for this because um, if you're unfamiliar, it's just a series of tiles that you can scroll through and each tile can be addressing a different pain point, so it's a good way to kind of seamlessly let people learn more about the, the product or the company um, just in one ad format. So as you can see, our first tile is um, more privacy, no newsfeed, because you know, Venmo, your privacy is just all out there. People know if you spent or you paid somebody for a meal and they can creep on you. So Venmo can be a little creepy. So I, I agree with that um, insight that we found. Um, so this format, we would link out to the App Store um, and try to get them to download the app. But again, if they don't convert, if we don't get them to convert at touch two, um, we send them to touch three. <laughs> too much fun with that. <laughs> um, so touch three would be really trying to get them to convert. So we want to send them something um, that would incentivize them even more. So if the carousel with the pain points didn't hook them to go to the App Store, um, we would send them uh, sort of an Instagram a story where you swipe up and you could get $5 off of your Starbucks, of your next Starbucks order by getting a $5 credit in your digital payment app. So that, again, is based off of the coffee or the Starbucks insights. You can kind of see just how directly the, that listing really does inform um, every decision we make um, from start to finish. So this is ideal, you know, ideally we'd have a Starbucks partnership and they would let us do this um, $5 uh, swipe to download offer, but this is a fake brief, so we had more fun with it. Um, so then if they swipe up to download, then they will get sent to the download store and get a conversion, which is our KPI. So that's really great. That's sort of just um, a very um, basic kind of understanding of how we drive people through the funnel. And if they don't, we can always go back and retarget them in each uh, phase along the funnel. So, I'm going to show a video now so I can stop talking for a little bit. Um, just showing an example of a campaign that we did for Philips where we um, actually have a really great piece of content for awareness. It's a really great example of what a hero content should be, uh, not showing the brand too much. Um, really, like, it's kind of emotional, so it gets the viewer's attention. Um, and so I'm going to show that to you now. And, uh, I feel good about this. <laughs> I really do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Of course. Thanks. My name is Mark Bustos. I'm a hairstylist based out of New York City. On my days off, I go out on the street and I look for homeless people um, to help out, whether it be a haircut or just a conversation. Just try to help out in any way to, to brighten someone's day. Nice to meet you. What are you thinking about a haircut today? Free? Free. My dog, whoa, whoa, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. You all right? I want a whole hog. You want a whole hog? Yeah. Is this my seat? This is your seat. Okay. Your seat, my friend. Feels good. <laughs> I feel like a new man. Thank you. 
I see myself now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I think grooming helps them take the next step in life just by giving them a little bit more confidence or even to just walk a little taller. I want to feel good when I go on my interview next week. And I, now I feel that way. I feel real good.
Uh, so the wall is going to be up through October. So feel free to come and study the accelerator to take a closer look at it. And then obviously social labs, it's right next to the accelerator. So if you have any questions after the session, feel free to look up Michael.